at school. Like, that was a pound a night I was paid on a Thursday night and Friday, sometimes on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And then I, my parents took the box around, and so I used to earn a good bit of money, uh, which enabled me to buy my first electric piano and first amplifier. And, and, and then when I turned professional, we got paid 15 quid a week to back people like Patti LaBelle and Billy Stewart and Major Lance and Wilson Pickett. And uh, 15 quid a week each between eight of us, and we did four gigs in one day. But we, when you're young, you don't think about the money. You just think about, oh, when's the next gig coming? Uh, you know, oh, we've got a gig, great. It's, money doesn't play a big part in, in, it didn't play a big part when I happened in the States, really. It was just, I couldn't believe my record was in the charts above Crosby, Stills and Nash. It was, it was pure excitement. I never had time to think about the money. Is that why, despite obvious tax disadvantages during the mm. 70s to you, mm that you chose to stay here? Well, I mean, I don't really feel this bit about taxes upon this. I was a, a wealthy man with paying the tax, so why, it was my home, um, and I love living here, so I really just never occurred to me ever to do it. Bernie, on the other hand, Bernie Torpin, who writes lyrics, went to a Los Angeles and loves it, and that's his you know, prerogative. Um, I just love living here. I could not live in the States for a long period of time, because it would just, it would change me, and it would change my outlook on life. And I love going to America, and I love playing there, but I have to get back to a little bit of sanity you're still quite accessible, I and mean, we do see you stay in England, for yeah. one. <coughs> and we see you on TV, and you make, you actively mm. promote your records, and don't seem to shy mm. away from that. Actually. I've always been pretty accessible. I've never, um, I've never done a Prince or anybody like that and surrounded myself with goons and things like that, I and mean, that's all bullshit, really. I mean, you can see that in the new album by Prince, he's just taking the mickey in me. Um, I think so, anyway, I had to take it off, and I'm a huge Prince fan. Uh, I think you just, you know, you can't get away with, I don't really want to live my life like that. I mean. We all get carried away initially when we're successful, and we all have a good time, and our egos get a little bit inflated. But um, it really is necessary for me to just live um, with people that won't let me get away with being basically a shit. Personal question. Are you happily married? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. How about you? I'm not married. <laughs> <laughs> See you afterwards. Yes, I need some advice. I need some guidance. Yeah. You know, in all seriousness, you know, it, you've publicly stated that you're bisexual. Yeah. People are curious as to yeah. why. You got married. Was it for reasons of companionship? Or? No, it was just because I wanted to get married. And I felt it was the right thing to do. I thought about it for a time. And you don't really enter into this sort of something like that. It's, you know it's going to be difficult in any situation. We've been together for um, nearly four and a half years. And yeah. there's been ups and downs. But it's not an easy business to remain married in. But it's something you work at. And you don't just throw something away that's valuable to you. And I think it's a valuable asset to me. And, and, and as two people, we really like each other. We love each other. And, and it's good for both of us. Sure, there are ups and downs. I mean, but it's an asset, and uh, you just have to keep working on it. I mean, in, in any field, it's bad enough, but in this business, because of you've been away from each other so long sometimes, uh, which sometimes can help as well, uh, it, it's very ultra-difficult. But I know what people said when I got mad, and I know they were I got some great telegrams, you know, um, brilliant telegrams, and then I was setting myself up, but I was going to be take, you know, people were going to take the piss. And basically, you, I knew that, so that didn't really matter. You have to have more courage to go, you just dump something because of what, what other people think. This is a new LP, Red Stripes Back. Now, you're getting rid of all these old costumes, is that yeah, right? Yeah, I'm getting rid of the whole lot, yeah. It's about time I cleared my wardrobe and had something a little more conservative. Bloody horrible, aren't they? Huh? Eh? No, they're not, have they? <laughs> <laughs> it gets so hard sometimes to understand This vicious circle's getting out of hand Don't need a lecture you release this LP, there's the auction, there's the fact that it's called Red Stripes Back. Do you think it's a real turning point in your life that you're openly admitting to everybody? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm pretty, I've admitted that most things to everybody anyway, um, <laughs> as we all know. But no, I think it's necessary for me to get rid of the stuff and to start again psychologically um, as an artist when you've made so many albums, over 30 albums, and you really want to ma make an effort and get a new band together. and. and and try and do something different. I, it, it all sort of coincides with, uh, with each other. The fact that if I hung on to all this stuff, plus the fact you couldn't move in my house, but if I get rid of all this stuff and, and really try and start again afresh as an artist, it really helps you it, it, psychologically deep down. You know, no matter how many times you say I'm clearing the past, after about five or six years, you have to clear them again. It's like it, you can never stand still a career, otherwise you'll be singing the same songs, you'll be playing in Vegas, you'll be doing which is the sort of thing I've always abhorred, totally. It's the fact that everyone said, Elton Wilde, he's going to end up in Vegas. I loathe Vegas. That's what all this was about. It's so anti-Vegas.
finally, what are people going to see on the American tour? And presumably there'll be a British one after this. Um, I don't really, I honestly don't know. I really want to get uh, just a hot cooking band with three incredibly fabulous black girl singers and just go uh, and play a lot of funky music. White boy.